Well, uh, uh, I think that one of the major challenges is uh, to raise a suspicion that my patients may be with a chronic respiratory disease actually as an NTM lung disease. So sus suspicion is very important because the uh, sign and symptoms of the disease uh, could be uh, unspecified. So patient might uh, undergo several investigations and seen by different doctors, uh, different diagnoses could be made. Uh, and uh, finally the patient actually has an NTM lung disease. So suspicion is very important. And then, uh, you know, uh, the identification of the disease activity is crucial in order to start uh, uh, promptly uh, the uh, correct antibiotic treatment. One other important uh, challenge could be the fact that uh, uh, because the, uh, we should increase the awareness of the disease uh, in terms of how to treat uh, NTM lung disease and uh, monotherapy uh, could not uh, be the right choice, although some patients, uh, especially in the early phase of the disease, might be treated with monotherapy and this is actually wrong and uh, uh, could lead to disease progression and uh, uh, could make things uh, a little bit difficult in a, um, in a second, uh, in a second uh, moment. Finally, uh, quality of life of the patients is so important. Uh, that these kind of patients uh, uh, are bad, they uh, have daily sign and symptoms and uh, we should find a treatment that can improve their quality of life and uh, their clinical outcomes in general. Well, I think that uh, first of all it's uh, a problem of increasing awareness. So people might have difficulties in identified NTM infection, in make uh, the diagnosis of an NTM lung disease, and uh, start uh, the prompt uh, uh, treatment. So this is, uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, at the early stage of the disease, we do not adhere, uh, people tend not to adhere to guidelines. The second reason uh, is that actually uh, we don't have uh, solid evidence on uh, uh, treatment for NTM lung disease and uh, we need big trials, multicenter trials in order to uh, increase uh, uh, the possibility that uh, patients are receiving the right treatments and we can improve their uh, clinical outcomes. Well, I'm a strong believer that multidisciplinary team uh, is nowadays uh, a sort of standard of care for most of uh, uh, chronic lung infection, uh, including NTM lung disease. I think that uh, I have in, in my multidisciplinary team back in Milan, uh, there are uh, several uh, healthcare professionals working uh, in the program and uh, I'm consulting with them every day. Uh, from the early uh, diagnosis of the disease to, uh, let's say, uh, palliative care in some of, of my patients. So I think that uh, key people in the multidisciplinary team should be, of course, uh, the uh, microbiologist, a clinical microbiologist, uh, should be a radiologist, especially uh, for the uh, follow-up uh, of the disease in order to understand if from a radiological point of view the patient is improving or is getting worse or is having some complication. In the multidisciplinary team, uh, I need a, a clinical immunologist uh, because of the host pathogen related in order to target the treatable traits in NTM lung disease uh, or etiology of the underlying disorder that could be an immunological one. Respiratory physiotherapy is, is crucial because the majority of the patient has bronchiectasis and we need uh, to improve airway clearance for this kind of patients and improve their sign and symptoms and the quality uh, of life and uh, surgeons because we should not, uh, should not forget that there is a surgical option for some NTM patients, so we tend to discuss with them and uh, several other healthcare professionals. 
So nowadays in 2018, uh, uh, this kind of uh, disease uh, uh, in specialized centers should be uh, treated, uh, diagnosed, treated and followed up uh, within a multidisciplinary team. And I think that the pulmonary, uh, the pulmonary physicians uh, have the responsibilities uh, to lead the multidisciplinary team.